What's up, everybody? Um, yeah, let's do some catching up. This is going to be a bit of a vlog thing, just a more of a glow up of the server room. I'm going to talk about where it started and kind of where it's at now, how, uh, how we got here and what the plans are. Uh, <laughs> when I posted my videos regarding uh, getting Proxmox installed on the R730 and everything, you guys kind of appreciated um, kind of the bare bones uh, take that I had on putting it, all that together for you guys, showing you guys the, the ups and the downs, the unanticipated things as a guy that's never done this before. So if you're, if you're starting a home lab and you're actually doing it with server equipment and stuff and you know, you're wanting to get into it, you don't have any experience whatsoever, like you're not crazy. <laughs> you can do it. All right. And I'm going to show you here in a minute exactly how far I've come from when I first started. So I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to cut in and show you guys a, a little reminder that I used to hang my R730 XD and my, uh, 2950 I used to hang them on this wall with two by fours and uh, I used to get a lot of flack for that because I mean who does that but it's all I had man it's it's literally all I had I didn't have a server a, a server rack I didn't have anything to mount them on so I just mounted them somewhere out of my way <laughs> so all right so now things are a lot better I'm gonna give you a, a, a quick look at how things are currently so if we look this way we got a TV mounted in here. My wife moved down here as well. Um, I got kind of tired of her, her being up on the second floor every time we gamed. It was like, it was just, I wanted to be closer. So I asked her if she wanted to come down here. She 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 took the, took the bait <laughs> and now she's down here with me. Uh, she's got a really nice setup now. And uh, yeah, after having gone from being mounted on the wall, we got us a nice, beautiful cis rack here that my father-in-law had gotten me for my 35th birthday this past summer. I'm still only running the R730 because I, I don't know, I just, I've been lazy with the 2950. I do have storage for this one. Not a whole lot, but it's enough. Um, and then I had a subscriber send me this really cool Dell One U server, but I don't have any storage for this thing so it, it's yeah <laughs> i'd prefer to have four hard drives i think i've only got maybe one that i managed to scrounge up so i i don't really have any anything to run that with which bums me out because i would really like to use that um more or less as a personal like backing up my pc is more or less what this will do i think um, so then, if you're not familiar, we've got the uh, Catalyst uh, 3560 Cisco switch. It's got 48 port on back, or excuse me, on the front, my back, your front, whatever. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we got all of this good stuff down here. Uh, over the past couple months that I've been gone, I did finally learn how to create my own patch cables. I know that's not a big, crazy, you know, milestone or anything, but it's really nice that I finally learned how to do that. So. I more or less color coded my cables in back. Blue go to the iDrax, black go to the servers for data transfers, and uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, I also have a 10 gigabit SFP module um, that I'm finally gonna dump into there so that the switch has access to uh, higher speeds. Uh, it's gonna help my servers, my game servers and stuff like that. It's gonna help all of that. I do have the Cisco uh, wireless mesh access points. And I was going to try and get those set up yesterday because uh, with my buddy that's living with us, he helped me run the coaxial cable for my modem directly to my server room yesterday. Uh, we got to looking at it and we realized, wait, this is all messed up. Like, it's totally screwed up. So um, he knew I wanted everything kind of centralized in the server room on the server rack. So he's like, why don't we just run a brand new cable in there? So that's exactly what we did. We run it in through the back so now my network is on the rack and once I did that I realized well why don't we try and get that mesh node access point system set up unfortunately come to find out from what I was reading is that my uh, catalyst 3560 48 port switch does not act as a wireless controller so unfortunately I either have to buy a new switch entirely or just try and find some kind of uh, Cisco I, I want to stay with Cisco wireless access controller that I can run exclusively for those mesh nodes so I'm a little bit bummed out about that because my eldest uh, his compute 
excuse me, his computer is in his room, which is two stories up, and the it has to run off Wi-Fi because we don't have any internet elsewhere in the house. So it, it runs good enough that he gets by, but it, some days it's a real pain. Um, and we do online homeschool. So when my kid ain't got access to the internet, that's a bit of a problem. So I'm gonna try and figure out how to get a wireless access controller into the rack. And then uh, we'll just run some, in fact, I might even just run the, the mesh nodes and everything, get them set up where I want them. That way, when I do get a controller, I can just plug them in, configure them and call it good. So, so I got that coming next week. That's kind of the state of the, the server as we still unorthodox um, in terms of IT content. But this is where I'm at with my home lab right now. Um, it, it's come a long ways. Every time I post a video, people show me a lot of love and support, uh, <laughs> especially when I hang them on the wall. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a good experience. I started with ESXi on these servers until the whole Broadcom acquisition, and then I switched to Proxmox, and that's what I'm using now, and I'm a huge fan. I've become a huge fan of Proxmox because you guys know I love Linux. I love working with Linux, and since Proxmox is based on Debian, that's just second nature to me. So. Uh, really, really liking that. I am. I still have yet to figure out VLAN configurations as well as reverse proxy. I I ain't even gonna bother with rever reverse proxy right now, but that is one of my top priorities. I I just can't figure it out. I don't know why I can't comprehend it. It's been a, a an incredibly frustrating experience for me to try and get the hang of networking. Um, I need the reverse proxy so that I can provide public access to all my family and stuff like I, I'm in Nebraska United States um, but I got family out in Idaho I got family all over the the country that could use services that I host but as it is right now without a reverse proxy I can only host one of those to the public at a time because the router is only going to permit access to one of those since it doesn't have anything to navigate uh, traffic in terms of that you know http and https and all that stuff so i don't really understand it i'm going to try and figure that out maybe this winter um but my number one priority right now is going to be trying to button up vlan configurations uh according to the videos that i've seen and the documentation i've read my configuration looks structured properly i think i'm just misunderstanding subnetting and how that stuff works to be honest with you i think the issue actually lies within trace routing because it seems like everything checks out i watch uh, hundreds of videos i've read hundreds of articles and blogs and yada yada blah blah and i look at my configuration and it looks it looks right it looks good but for whatever reason when i apply that configuration to the switch it just cuts off internet to all of my shit and so I want to say it's got something to do with trace routing because I think trace routing is the feature that allows VLANs to communicate with each other on a local level. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I got I got I got to dive into that. It's been a few months since I've tried messing with that, but that's kind of where I'm at. I'm starting to feel better about my server room because it just feels a little more professional now that I'm actually getting my ducks in a row. I've got a nice system rack thanks to my father-in-law. My, you know, my I, one of my subscribers sent me a really cool One U server that I, I'm wanting to get up. So ideally, the next video you guys will see from me, I will actually have that One U server back up and running or up and running. Uh, I just got to get my hands on some storage. So um, yeah, that's kind of really where I'm at. I hope you guys dig it. I hope you guys are, you know, maybe a little bit inspired if you're as crazy as I am and just kind of jump into this crap with both feet. Um, it's been really exciting. I, I know it ain't perfect. I'm sure I'll get some flack for running the server off a shop power cable and all that crap, but it's all I got. I'm doing, I'm making do with what I got and it's uh, seems to be working so far. So Without any further ado, I appreciate you guys. Hope to see you in the next video, and uh, yeah, stay cool.